anything. So I'm just going to, Hey, <laughs> oh my gosh, we are live. This is so awesome. Hey, this is Linda West with Living Life Inc. I'm in the process of rebranding, Pauline. I'm so excited to share that later. But oh, today, good. yes, I'm so excited to interview one of my clients, Dr. Pauline Crawford Omps. And I always want to say oomps, and I'm sorry, because I think it's because like the Oompa Loompas, it reminds me of the Oompa Loompas, one of my favorite movies of all time. But I'm here to interview, you know, Pauline, and she's got this amazing book called Magical Conversations. And, you know, the thing is about conversations is that we have them all day, every day, whether it's via social media, maybe it's on a telephone, maybe even if you're doing a live video from yourself to to the people, you're having a conversation with people, but we're gonna get down to having conversations in the boardroom, how you can have these magical conversations so that both men and women can come together. And so I'm mean, really excited to talk to Pauline about this because this is her specialty. We're gonna share her story about how she came to do this and what um, information she can give you as takeaways to help you to have magical conversations. So welcome Pauline, I'm so excited to have you here today. I am absolutely delighted to be here, Linda. You're you're amazing, and I love having conversations with you. But all my <laughs> life, I've loved having conversations. So I think I'm very fortunate to be doing what I love doing. Yeah, and that's the key, right? To like oh. to life is like if you can do what you absolutely love doing, you should be doing yeah. that. You should be doing that, uh, and it goes back in in the whole of my history is that uh, I loved having conversations, and for me because um, my byline in, in my book is um, my book is yes. uh, transforming conflict into collaboration. So if you think about that, the missing word is connection. Mm. So conversations are all about connecting. And we now have a world which is different to the one that I was a child in, because now we can connect via social media, yeah. by, by text, you know, we have thousands literally you know if we're in the in the business we've got thousands literally of messages coming in every month mm -hmm. how do you how do you have a conversation within those and and how in particular do you have conversations at work where the pressure's on you know that, that's one of the things is that if we're having a coffee time conversation with our favorite girlfriends or boyfriends or who are, or children that that's that's delightful but when we're under pressure you know the boss comes in and says I need that on my desk by four o'clock and it's three o'clock and you're going, oh, what? you know. Yeah, been there, done that, by the way. <laughs> yeah, you know, and you're going, oh, 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 oh. And also, as men and women, we're very different. Uh, so that's another thing that I study within conversations is how do we come to conversations? Now, generally, women love conversations a little bit more than men, in my experience. I don't know about yours, but... Um, Women love to explore and chatter, and, and we find out ways to do things and we find solutions through our conversations. Okay. Very often, men, especially at work, they communicate uh, along a particular line of, this is a problem, this is a solution, how are we gonna get there? Don't let's waffle, um, you know, who's gonna do what, action, go. And the women <laughs> are still going, yeah, they're well, like they're like, what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> We're having a conversation. So, in fact, when we talk about, especially when we talk about uh, the boardroom, or it could be a team meeting, it could be anything where we walk into the room, the table is there, um, the item is on the table. You know, we're going to do X, Y, and Z. How do we engage in the conversation? Because the conversation is about how we feel, to my mind. Um, and there's that great Maya Angelou quote, you know, it isn't what you do and isn't what you say, it's how you leave people feeling. Mm -hmm. Now, there are some bosses or team leaders, male and female, who can leave other people feeling confused. Uh, what just happened there? What am I supposed to do? Oh, I didn't like to ask that question because uh, I think she thought I knew it. Or yeah. he was so demanding, um, uh, and then we go and ask somebody else. But to be in a conversation I believe you need to be fully present in the conversation. So it's about whether you uh, have started the conversation or you're, le or you're in it, or you're observing it, be in the conversation. Well, let's, um, first of all, I wanna say you're welcome, Dr. Pauline. Um, and we're, if you want to connect with her, make sure I typed it wrong, right? Uh, MissMagicalConversations.com. You can find her book there, uh, Magical Conversations. So what I wanna find out first, Pauline, is like, 
um, magical conversations. What's what makes them magical? Like what what is that when you say it's like, oh, my God, that was totally a magical conversation? Well, I believe it's different to um, other conversations. So not all conversations are magical. Some are debating, some are discussions, some are very um, transactional. A magical conversation to me is something where, and indeed the the unbelievable becomes believable. Because uh, if you look, if you watch a magic act, uh, you see a great magician, they, they do something and you sort of think, gosh, I didn't think that was possible, but it, it happened. So in a magical conversation, things come up that you hadn't expected because you, you're, you're inviting the unknown to come up. And that's where our creativity sparks, where we get the excitement. So we add into the conversation, but we, we come out of it with something new. And that for me is the magical bit. And it, it moves us away from getting stuck in conversations where we don't feel happy. So a magical conversation is essentially upbeat. It's, it's positive. Um, and to, to that extent, it's happy. Well, you know, oftentimes I find, oh, first, if you're watching live, go ahead and type live, uh, hashtag live in the comments. We have a Shannon here. We have Pauline. That's you. <laughs> and we have me. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So yeah, if you're <laughs> watching live, type hashtag live in the comments below. If you're watching the replay, go ahead and do a hashtag replay. If you have any questions for Pauline as we're going, or if you're watching the replay, yeah. Go ahead and put them in the comments below and she will respond to those later. So Pauline, one thing that I found is, you know, I've done a lot of networking. I started my entrepreneurial journey a little over four years ago. It was December of 2014. And starting my entrepreneurial journey set me out on this thing, like this quest of meeting new people, right? Which meant I had to have a lot of conversations, which I ended up attending a lot of networking events. There were a lot of things I learned about networking that I liked and a lot of things I learned that I didn't like and a lot of things I learned that I love. But one of the things that I found in a lot of conversations, and maybe you can address this for our audience, is that oftentimes it seems that when people are having a conversation with each other, many people are really not listening, like you said, they're not present, and they're thinking about what they're going to say next, rather than actually listening. Have you found that to be the case? Is that gender specific? Is it like, what's your experience with that? I think there there is a slight difference in in the gender bit. And as I say, you know, men are, are less into conversation than women are. But I do think with networking, the, the challenge is that we go, so what do you do? Oh, I do. And we, we start talking about what we do, which is very limiting. It's, it's, it's more difficult to share what I do. I can ask you what you do, but it's kind of a uh, uh, conversation. Whereas if you have a conversation about uh, an energy, I saying, you know, oh, what brought you to this network today? I came because I'm really excited about sharing and you're immediately giving something of yourself as opposed to going straight into, well, I do this and that. So like mm. when you do, when they do speed networking and you have to tell yourself, you know, you've only got 30 seconds, you're better off putting some energy descriptive words in rather than what you actually do. Because okay. it's, it's I, the energy yeah. that connects you, not the content. That is interesting because if you come into it, um, like you said, hello, Patty, say hi to Patty. Hi, Patty. <laughs> if you come into the convert, I like that. So if you, um, I've heard some people say uh, when they meet somebody, they ask you, what are you passionate about? But what I like about what you just said, which I think really changes the whole dynamic again of the conversation, right? Is that you're, you're, you're starting the conversation in a way that's actually moving into an actual conversation. Yes. Rather than and a one sided, like I'm asking you a question like, hey, you might not yes. be ready for my question, but here it comes. <laughs> yeah. And of course, you, you do get some people who, you know, as soon as you say, well, what do you do? They will tell you chapter and verse and, you, and you're going to. You know. You're like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. So the, the other one is actually uh, sharing. Um, you can still come from an eye point of view by sharing what do you value? You say. Oh, you know, one of the things I really value about meeting people is that I enjoy the energy that we can share. How about you? Because then it, 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 it's an introduction to the other person to give you some magic back. Because that's mm. the other thing about a constructed magical conversation circle, which I run, is that you're inviting people to leave their judgment outside the door. And you come in with your experience and your values and your, your passions rather than what you do. 
Okay. Do you walk around with a magic wand? <laughs> <laughs> An imaginary one. And actually, that, that's a, a very good um, question. I do say to people sometimes, uh, okay, I'll ask you, Linda, if I gave you a magic wand, what would you like to share? Oh, I like that. <laughs> because, you know, when, we, um, when we've all read fairy tales and a magic wand, it's a genie in the lamp. It's like, ah, oh, I've got three wishes. Mm -hmm. Our imagination starts and we go, because it, we could say anything, it's magic. So we don't have to say, well, you know, I'd really like a house on the avenue down the road, da, da, da. We can actually, we think into our imagination. And I think we're not using our imagination enough. And that's a very important asset. Imagination and curiosity, um, they're, they're two very important things. Yeah, that's, I really like that. That's um, got me thinking about different ways to start mm -hmm. those conversations because I'm what's known as a shy extrovert. So I'm not an introvert, you know, or I know introverts a lot of times, like when they get into um, big environments that they have to escape to re yes. recharge. I charge up when I move, in, get into a, like a large yes. event and stuff. So I'm an extrovert that way but I'm very shy on the approach. So if it's just a matter of changing the language I use on like on the approach of a conversation that that might help me to, to have fun with it. Right. So then I get to go in as that extroverted person, just having a yes. totally different approach to the conversation. So awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> That's okay. The, the goal is to connect with somebody. Um, and I would say, you know, there's always something you can connect on. Um, mm. I give you something really ridiculous. You might be talking about, um, you know, what kind of vegetables do you like eating and find somebody loves um, carrots and you love carrots. You know I mean? It doesn't really matter what it is. It's then about, oh, what does that do for you? What's that exciting? You know, it, it's like once the connection is there and if we find an absolute connection, then it bonds us for life. And next time you meet that person, they'll go, oh, I remember you. Yeah. <laughs> They like um, iPhone or PC, right? <laughs> you yeah. have this like this war or pe Pepsi or Coke, because then you have these like uh, people are so adamant about what it is that they really, really love. And so that's yeah, kind of an interesting thought. I love that. Elizabeth, welcome. Welcome. You, if you guys have any comments or questions, you know, while, while we're live here or d during the replay, please go ahead and put in the comments below and then we'll address them now. So Pauline, how did you, cause you said you've always loved, loved conversations. So you're a little kid, you love conversations, but how yes. did you, like, when did you actually discover that? Cause I don't know when I even might have discovered that I like talking. Yeah. To you know? I think, I think uh, it was, um, it was more about being a connector. I mean, I wasn't, I, you know, like yourself, you know, we can be introvert, extrovert. I wasn't, I wasn't one who would just bound into the middle of the room and go, yeah, but I would be quite ha happy to meet people and, and know. So for instance, at school, I used to go to school early so that I knew what everybody was doing. It was kind of like, <laughs> sounds like I was very noisy, nosy, but I, I was, I would be the conduit for information. So people would come to me and say, oh, Pauline, do you know what so-and-so is doing? Or, or is that event on tonight? I say, oh yeah, it is. And I just had this mind full of things. So I was very useful as a connector. Okay. Um, and I think uh, later on, when I wasn't confident, because I have been lots of times not confident in my life, I was not the conversationalist, only in private, in small areas. Mm -hmm. And really I didn't understand and learn this uh, really till about 15 years ago, which is actually relatively not that very long ago. So it's about realizing why I enjoyed some conversations and not others. So I started studying and I'm thinking, so I like it there because I'm not being judged. So this idea about not bringing a judgment in, not bringing an assumption in and listening. So really if somebody said something that I didn't necessarily agree with, I didn't say, oh, no, no, you're wrong. I just say, oh, okay, um, I see it this way. So what you're doing is you're sharing perspectives and that opens you up to a possibility of conversation and a connection. Whereas if somebody says something, you say, oh, I don't like that, you sh we, sh we shut down. And then there's no connection and no conversation. Right, because it can cause a defensive defensive yes. posture, right? Like, yes. And I love that because you know I created my, my whole environment is 
making sure that I provide a judgment free, safe zone. And yes. that was really important to me. And I like you, you know, I had to real for me, I had to realize like why I wanted to create that kind of environment is because there was so much judgment when I was growing up and I didn't feel safe when I was growing up. So I wanted to provide that environment. But what was cool is that I remember the first time I actually walked into a room where I felt like I wasn't being judged. And that was such a wonderful, um, warm, enveloping feeling yes. that I wanted. And I wanted to make sure I can create that, you know. So yes. that's awesome. And, you and mentioned you, right, you, confidence, right? You want to create that for other people. So one of the things that, as a, a thought is that uh, my big realization, uh, to be honest, I can't remember what it was, but it might have been some time ago because I've been around a long time but when I realized that I didn't have to know everything so when I was a teenager and even when I was at, at university I was always afraid that I was going to say something that was wrong and be laughed at and I mean I have had that happen to me in my lifetime but what I realized and maybe it was in my 30s I don't know but I realized I don't need to know everything so if somebody says something and I in the past would have tried to pretend I knew. I just go, you know, I don't know anything about that. That is interesting. So what you do is you put yourself into their expertise. And of mm -hmm. course, people then love it because they can yeah. tell you about it and you learn. And you, then you don't have to never not know that again. And it's such a simple thing. And yet when I was a teenager, I can remember on occasion, pretending I knew something and then you'd always come a cropper you know somebody say but do you really know that and I'm going oh no <laughs> what is a cropper oh sorry um you you you'd, uh, oh gosh uh, that doesn't translate you'd be wrong you'd be be you'd be seen to be stupid oh okay 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 you'd over yourself so like a um, like a know-it-all kind of maybe like like where you know you have an answer for everything but maybe it's not always the right answer that like that and you know, some people seem to seem to always know everything. I don't yes. think that anybody could always know everything. Yeah, I've known some of those people in my life. Okay, so <laughs> we have a question here. It started from my childhood. Um, <laughs> what about small talk? And that's a great question, Elizabeth. So yeah, talking about small talk, how can you use these techniques to maybe to uh, get rid of small talk. Like, you know, people talk, oh, how's the weather? I, I was just in the elevator and this guy was like, oh, it's really cold out. Like what else, what the kind of conversation could we have had in the elevator well, maybe? <laughs> well, again, you could go back to talking about, um, about the energy of the weather as opposed to, oh, you know, the weather. Um, oh, I always feel a bit down when the weather's like this. You know, I don't know whether that happens to you. Oh, I love it when it's sunny uh, because it makes me feel good. So mm. that's talking about the weather in a different way. And okay. I suppose the idea of small talk is what's it there for? Usually it's there to um, kind of do the first, the first um, mumblings of good conversation, but look at the value about it and, and what connects you. So I, 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 used to, I always do an exercise with my clients where you talk about a topic that you're interested in. So maybe it's travel or cooking or whatever it is, but you talk about the value you get out of it. Okay. So instead of saying like, let's use the traveling as an example, I'm not a cook, so I won't talk about that. Okay. So let's use the traveling as an example. So if let's say, for example, I, I've been to Hawaii. And so instead of saying I've, I've been to Hawaii and I really love it. What would be a way that I could direct that conversation where it's inviting them to be part of the conversation? Oh, you, you might say, you know, um, one of the warmest welcomes I ever had was when I was traveling to Hawaii. I don't know whether you've ever been there, uh, but just had a really amazing energy to the place. So what you're implying by that is where your values are around holidays. Mm. Now, if somebody's never been to Hawaii, they might say, oh, that sounds really interesting. And you say, well, yeah, because, you know, Hawaii's got amazing beaches. And so what you're doing is you're not, you're not boring them. You're giving them adjectives. I think often we, it's the adjectives and the descriptive words we put in that draw people in. Mm, and I don't and, do and, that very often at all. No, so and, and imagine, <laughs> imagine your experience as you were there. Um, so even if it's um, a small talk, you don't say, you know, I'm a good cook. You might say, oh, I'm just one of those people. I love herbs, the herbs, they say herbs in this country. I love herbs <laughs> and I love mixtures. And, you know, I know lots of people don't understand those smells, but they just really, really excite me. 
you know, and what you're doing is you're you're opening up a different menu, so to speak. Yes, yeah, like a colorful conversation, right? Yeah. So you're you're adding color to the conversation. That's cool. Yeah. So let's go Isn't back it? and see what we have here. So Patty says perspectives is magical. That's so true. Sharing your different perspectives. Oh, she says, what was that word or phrase again that you use? It started with a C, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't remember. Uh, became a cropper. <laughs> cropper. Yeah, cropper. I'll have to look that up in the English dictionary. But you know, if um, if you fell down in the street, an Englishman say, "Oh, he came a cropper. He 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 fell." So if if you fell over your um, conversation, um, and I think when I was a kid, I often felt stupid if I didn't know something, and if you feel stupid, that blocks you from having a conversation. And actually, if you again back to that, you know, you don't need to know everything, but you yes. you you talk talk from your experience of being in the situation you were at. So I say to me, imagine where you were when you were having the experience, and just express the feeling that that came with it. That's awesome. Now you're um, like before we go there. Okay, so Patty says Cropper. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> okay, so she says, let's see. Oh God, hope I am not looked at as a know-it-all. You're not, Patty. <laughs> Okay, so this is a great input for future videos. Oh, awesome. Yes, create interest, other stories, adjectives. Good point, Pauline. Um, so let's talk about, you have a, a workshop that's coming up and what is it that we're going to be able to learn in this workshop? It is November 17th and how can people find find yeah. out find about it? Um, this Sunday, yes. The difference about this um, workshop and it is for, for women only and that's not because men wouldn't enjoy a similar workshop, but we choose to have women only because we're exploring what our identity is as women within conversations. It's not, it's February the 17th, not November oh. 7th. <laughs> Let me change that. Okay, so what we were exploring is, um, and, and this is my pilot program here in the US, so I'm really fascinated to find out how American women come to this information. But how do we as women differ in our being uh, which relates to our conversation? So in my experience, what I've found is that some women we're all female and certain aspects of conversation come from being a female. So we're, we tend to be relationship focused, we're nurturers, we love conversation. But some of us are slightly more masculine in our energy and some are more feminine in our energy. And we can relate this to our body shape. So that's gonna be the fascinating really? thing. We're actually gonna look at our body shape in the big mirror. Um, we're not gonna we, don't have to, we, we don't have to take our clothes off. Okay, that's thank right. you. Um, but the the aspect of how we walk, how we stand, how we how we um, present ourselves, will give us an indication, and then our experiences come into it, and our our brain, our neurology, how our neurology is, if it's whole brain or left brain or right brain. So what we're going to explore is various assets of who we are as women, and then we're going to look at the conversation that we will have with other women and also with men, even though men are not in the room we'll explore the scenarios that have become difficult. So going back to the workplace, you know, where have you had a difficulty with, um, not always a male boss, but a female boss, but you know, where's the dynamic between people at work uh, upset you or giving you cause to feel uh, negative about what you're doing? So it's all about enabling the women in the room to understand more and we look at scenarios and by sharing in a magical way, we will hear another person's problem or issue or difficulty and you'll go, oh yeah, that's mine as well. So it's very enlightening. And what I find is fascinating with the map that I've designed, which is about men and women, I don't need, if I do a single uh, client experience, I don't need the other person in the room. Mm. So it's all about how I, understand my perspective when I've got a difficulty as to how I manage it. Obviously you can have the two people or the several people in the room, but it is possible to change your perspective or adapt your perspective by understanding the whole map, which is really exciting. Yeah, that's interesting. I do have a question related to that. Um, you mentioned the body body types. Oh, body, actually our bone structure. is bone right structure. About, Yeah, actually okay. the way that we stand, our gait, uh, the way we walk, the way we present ourselves. Okay, so my question relates then to if that's the case, can a person change change their gait? You can't change our bones. We can't change our no. structure, right? So, am I like my? I'm who I am from birth, or can yes. I? 
Oh, well, so, my, so if I don't like it, how do I change it? <laughs> uh, well, we can learn. We can always learn. Uh, we can learn behavioral patterns. We can learn new habits. Um, I mean, a classic example of this, which I think people will probably know in this country, is um, Margaret Thatcher, who was uh, the Prime Minister of England some years ago. But if you watch footage of her, she changed her voice and she changed her presence, but she still was naturally who she was. Uh, okay. and, and I will share on Sunday where I think she is on the map. But I think one of the things, a bit like we said at the beginning, when you're passionate about what you do, you do it best. When you understand your natural state of being, whether it's a female with a stronger masculine energy or feminine energy, you can play all the roles. But when you know where your natural start place is, it gives you a very high level of uh, happiness and satisfaction. And then you can manage the rest of it in situations i'm really excited to find out mine because i believe i know what it is but i'm going to have an open mind and oh yes please <laughs> i have an open mind to discover what comes out of it because i've been going through this um mental change um you know yes. so I, I grew up as a tomboy i played football you know i didn't play and i played uh, baseball not softball you know like all the girls were playing softball i was playing baseball and i played basketball and i was tree climber and i hung out with guys all the time and so i see myself as more of like a masculine uh, type of woman but i'm interested to find out what the results come out because i've just recently realized that there is feminine femininity oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, femininity. it's in there and i just haven't tapped into it because that's not that's not how i grew up you know, I, I had um, some friends who played with dolls and all that stuff, but I just wasn't into that, you know? So I'm interested to find out. Is that well, actually giving you all that information because now you have info? <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and it is interesting because um, a group of women together are, are actually more uh, complex than a group of men together. So the essential, <laughs> yeah. even the body shapes, men are more simple. And we will explore this, even though they won't be in the room, we'll, we'll share some illustrations. And that's part of the, the mix. But I think as we all evolve and we all become enlightened, we can then understand the masculine and feminine energy in all of us. So then it's about understanding where the difficulties are and whether you want to move past them. Yeah, so Elizabeth says she's masculine energy. So Elizabeth, hopefully you'll be there so we can find out if if the results, because I'm I'm really interested to find out because I feel like I'm masculine energy as well. Uh, but I've had other people tell me I'm feminine energy, but I'm like, I don't know. I just don't know. I'm going to find out. Yeah, oh, yes, before I mean, we go any further, um, so yeah. it, it is um, November 17th. It's in Escondido. And Patty actually put a link in the comments. So you can click on that link right there. That'll take you right yes. to the um, to the and end. And if anybody uh, does want to come, make sure they send me a message um, because I'm putting the final list together and just send me a private message on Facebook or, or just uh, anywhere while we'll, we'll I'm collecting the list together. And oh. it's very important for me this because um, uh, I've decided to waiver the, the fee because I need this as um, evidence that I can take this across the whole of America and across the world. I've done this in other countries, but this is the first one in America. First so it'll America. be interesting to find out the results, right? Because here you're doing it in America just to see if those results are the same, you know, similar or absolutely different. So, because um, different cultures, different, but. Yes. The body, and, body, I, and I was body doing these in, in Malaysia as well. So in Malaysia okay. is a very different culture. Okay. Because a body type is body type, right? So. Well, absolutely. I was, I was sort of connecting with a woman today and she said, well, that's interesting because body type transcends every other diversity. And if you think about it, there are certain things about being a man and a woman uh, biologically, which are the same across the world, you know, the way we have babies, et cetera, et cetera. You know, there are some things that transcend everything else. And I believe that we need to understand that in the mix of the complexity of arguments and conversations that, that go wrong, um, because we need to sort out the world and work together. And that coming back to the workplace, working together is the best team evidentially and emotionally uh, mixed teams make the best creative sustainable uh, innovative creative output that's that's recognized across the world so why don't we do it yeah and even you know like uh, there's just as simple as 
um, you know, I've had 49 jobs, so I've been in a lot of different workplaces, <laughs> right? So I've been in a lot of different work environments and there's different reasons why I left each job. You know, I was never fired. I was laid off once, uh, but that was with 300 people. So it wasn't like, I was <laughs> oh, that doesn't count. Yeah, exactly. And so it's, it's interesting because um, had communication or conversations been more open and been more um, like in the present now situation, yes. I think that I probably would have stayed probably at my fourth job, which was the first ones were all fast food, you know? So my fourth job was working at a credit union, but I felt like I felt misunderstood. And oh. I think that feeling misunderstood is why a lot of people leave their jobs. Often people will stay on their jobs and just complain about them, bitch and complain about them. But yes. feeling understood is something that I think as a human being that, oh. that probably all of us just want to belong yes and feel understood. And so being able to have these conversations, right. learning how, especially um, bosses, learning how to be able to communicate with your employees, just imagine your employees true. actually sticking around <laughs> and you not having to retrain people after people after people after people. That's right, you're exactly right. Being misunderstood and not knowing how to belong. Needing to belong is a human need. Yeah. Um, it, it's so important. That's why we like the title or a status because, you know, or even, a, Mr. and Mrs., you know, it helps us to identify. We, we don't need them, but we we need them. You know, it's like it's 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 um it's like human beings have a sense of achievement. These are things that animals don't have. We're my very husband, unique. he belongs to me. <laughs> right. Well, like, but, my but belonging belong to a friend, you know, belong to a group, or um, and when yeah. we get ousted from a group, or we get told off by a boss, you know, it goes to the heart. Yes, and, I mean, most people. Is certainly nowadays in entrepreneurial as it they like to be at work with people they like mm -hmm. you know they they go to work to spend a lot of their life and to have friends at work yeah so, imagine that <laughs> yeah. yeah and the conversation like you work with <laughs> well it, the whole works uh, the whole work environment has changed now but even so i mean you think about entrepreneurial uh, enterprises it's people coming together because they want to be together and so yeah. even like with good clients, you tend to end up as a friend, you know, yeah. and that's that's one of the things that women, I believe, have brought to the workplace is that we have instinctively brought our life into work. We, we, we find it difficult to separate it at the work door, whereas men traditionally have been able to do that. They go to work, they work, they come back, and then they're in the family. Um, yeah. I think that's changing, but it's still mostly they separate it whereas we bring it together and that's what men often don't understand but it's valuable in today's world because we need to work together and we need to understand the emotional template of our lives mm. uh, because if we work and we're not happy and then we're under pressure then we get sick and we die it's not a good idea yeah we don't yeah we don't want that <laughs> You see, unfortunately, Elizabeth can't make it. She's going to be in. Well, fortunately, she's going to be in Big Bear, but unfortunately, she can't make it because Big Bear. Is well, be well, Elizabeth, we'll have to have a session over at your place then. <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. This is yes. the first of many. Yeah, first of many. Yeah, this is the first one in the United States. You guys, she's done this in you know different countries, and is exploring it in the United States to see how it works with us. And so. Bring your American game with you. <laughs> yeah, and we won't be a cropper, that's for sure. That's right, no croppers allowed. No croppers allowed. But it's going to be a really fun event. I'm really excited. Let me put it up on the screen again. This February 17th, the workshop. And if you want to connect with Pauline, go find her on her website at MissMagicalConversations.com. Yes calm she's absolutely amazing and I, I love having conversations with you too and you know it's just the more people that i have conversations with the more enlightened i become to different things in the world and it helps to open my mind and i we talked briefly about the know-it-alls right and so how can you have a conversation with somebody is a know-it-all is maybe something we'll be able to explore on oh, saturday yeah. because oh, sunday sunday we'll explore sunday. that on sunday yes, I've, yes. Got a, I've got a i've got a i have got a technique for that so yeah, because you can have those conversations with them. It's just learning how. So we'll be Thank talking you. about you know, the know-it-all conversations on Sunday, November 17th at the workshop. Again, you can um, go in the comments and Patty has put a link there to the yes, workshop. that's really good. What time is the workshop? 10 o'clock until 4. 10 to 4. Okay, in Escondido, um, uh, in Escondido. San Diego County. Yes, and um, yeah, it's going to be a very... Um, 
exciting day. And um, and as I say, it's, it's the value is $147, but I want to waiver the fee because I want to have you all engaged to show me that it works here. Yeah. Give me some testimonials, and then we can take it around the country. Um, because women, you know, women and men together, this is the year of collaboration. 2019, it's a year of collaboration. Mm -hmm. I totally agree. And I'm excited about that because it's about time. <laughs> it's about time. It's, it's one of my hashtags, it's time to talk. Yes, <laughs> for sure. So you guys, hopefully we'll see you on Sunday at the, the workshop. Uh, that's Sunday the 17th in Escondido. Again, the the link is in the comments. Patty has posted it below. So we will see you there and uh, message Pauline to let her know that you're coming. Yeah, as your message artist. me. I'm on Facebook. Just message me and we'll get the yeah. list together. Awesome. Pauline, it was great, great, great. Always great connecting with you and having you on the show. MissMagicalConversations.com. And I'll see you in person on Sunday. Have I'll a good see one. you. All right. Bye. 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 -bye. Bye.